Hey friend, in this video, I'm going to be teaching you the easiest way to paint watercolor roses in different perspectives. So obviously when we're painting our loose floral pieces, we don't just wanna have the same shape and angle of our flower over and over repeated throughout the piece because that's gonna look really flat and really boring. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be giving you a few, actually six different perspectives and angles and a little bit of a difference on style for loose watercolor roses because we are in part three of a four part, four part series on doing and painting the cover art for my book, Everyday Watercolor. So in the previous weeks, if you missed them, we discussed how to get a cohesive color palette and color mixing, and then also composition. And now we're on loose watercolor roses. So if you're ready, let's dive in. All right, so now that I have my composition kind of nailed out, I'm gonna explain how to paint a loose style watercolor rose with a round brush. We are referencing the cover of my first book, Everyday Watercolor. And in the next video, which is a part of this whole series, the previous video was this, um, I explained my process in mapping out composition and doing a thumbnail exercise. So make sure you watch that if you haven't yet. And we also did the color mixing part in the first part. So in this tutorial, I am going to be showing you how to paint a loose rose in a few different styles. So obviously flowers grow in many different shapes and sizes. Even roses come in hundreds of different varieties, but they also can be looked at from many different angles and perspectives. So you want to make sure that you're not just painting in your loose floral uh, pieces, that you're not just painting one type of position or angle of a rose. Even if you are just painting one variety of rose, having multiple different sizes and angles and positions is going to help make it feel more natural, make it feel like it's more real life and also give it more flow. So one, this is a size six round brush from the Princeton Heritage series, one of my all time favorite brushes. Um, I used to only use this brush ever, all the time, ever all the time. Um, and then I've expanded and grown my library of brushes, but I love this brush. It's, it should, in my opinion, be in every single watercolor artist's um, toolbox of brushes. And so for roses, the first type of loose watercolor rose that I'll show you is probably the most standard that a lot of beginners will just start with. This, this perspective on a rose is just gonna be a vertical hold. So I have the handle of my brush pointed mostly straight up and so it's not super low. And when I do that with a round brush, I'm able to use this pointed tip of my brush instead of on its side, which is gonna give me a wider stroke. So for my roses, I like to, let's start with um, our more open straight down perspective of our rose. I'll maybe just start with a heart shape or this little like swirly, um, just a lot of different seekers, but it's basically making the overall shape of a circle or an oval. If you think about how a rose grows, we have these petals all kind of wrapped around that get fatter and fatter as the rose expands. Um, and so we're just starting with this really tight inner circle with super duper thin and short lines. So I'll maybe even come out on the side with my brush to expand some of these lines a little bit but the inner part of a rose is really tight. It's really saturated with color. So this is where my darkest colors are gonna be. Um, and uh, so it's dark and then it's really thin and small strokes as well. So keep your strokes really thin and follow that overall shape of your circle. And then when I get a couple rows out from the center of these little dashes and lines, and some of them might be wonky looking, some of them, might not look like petals, but then once you continue to add stuff, it starts to become full and look like a rose. But then at this stage is when I rinse my brush off completely and I use wet and wet technique because this pink color is still wet. I use wet and wet technique and I'll just start to fan out some of these fatter petal shapes on the edges. And I like to go next to a petal and just grab the point or the edge of it, the corner of it, and expand it a little bit into another, another petal shape. So I'll go right here and overlap just a little bit. And we can have petals that are fanning out a little bit more. 
And so I'm just basically following the overall shape of this circle shape and breaking it up with different rows of petals, making sure that there's thin gaps of white space as I go around that circle. So now let's do a more dusty rose color like we mixed up in the first video of this series. We'll start with our small little circle using vertical holds. And I'll just start to pull out these thin, wispy C curves that follow that overall tightness and shape of this circle. And then when I get about a few of these little thin C curves out from the center, I get thicker and lighter in transparency. So I'm gonna lighten my brush. If you need help with paint and water consistency, I have a great video on my YouTube channel called the Tea to Butter Exercise. So we'll link to it in this video if you need help with lightening your colors. But then at this stage, I just kind of still follow around that flow, that circle shape. with some thin strokes, some thicker strokes. Sometimes I'll use the tip of the brush and drag it down. Sometimes I'll use the side of the brush. Depends on the overall shape of the petal that I want. But these thin gaps of white space is what's gonna make it feel like a rose because we're separating our petals with those thin little gaps of white space. So I'm just kind of going in and flicking my brush around and not being too precise or clean with what the shape looks like. And sometimes I like to go back into the center of the flower and darken it a little bit. And while these lighter petals are still wet, you can go up against the bottom or the tops of them to add some of a little bloom or gradient. And you can keep going and make this even fuller or just kind of make it look like a more just starting to open flower. So again, with the different perspectives on our flowers, we get to create more movement and more lifelike pieces. So with this little indent here on this flower, that's a great place. That's usually where I like to place a lot of my, my stems if I have a flower that has that. So I'm gonna make this a bit more muted since this is a bit more of a muted pink. So I'm gonna add brown to my green, maybe a little pink, and we'll pull down from the center of the flower. You can pull from the tip of the leaf down with pressure, or you can go the opposite way. So I'm using a vertical hold for my stems. So you can start at the tip of the leaf with a slanted hold bring it down. Some artists like to do it that way. I prefer to do it the opposite way with the round brush. So I'll start at the base of the leaf, press and release, press and release. It just gives you more of that shape. like so, and maybe for this brighter pink, I would do something also in the vibrant range, sap green and green gold. Instead of a smoky brown undertone green, we're just gonna keep it vibrant for the sake of cohesiveness. I just like to dance around my petals
now we're going to test out a bit more of a fluffy or open rose situation with the round brush. So I'm going to start with my main color. Again, I can mix up any color I want to, but if I'm following a specific color palette, refer back to that first video we did earlier um, in this series if you need tips on that, on color mixing. So now let's paint a rose, like a David Austin rose or something like that, where we're just seeing it on its side. So we have maybe some petals in the front. I'm starting at the top of the petal and pressing down into the base and just kind of creating this overall bowl shape for to start. And then I'll lighten my pigment, grab more water, make sure to get rid of excess water on your paper towel so you're not just adding puddles of water to your sheet of paper. And then I'll pull these downward petals, petals that are falling toward me almost, um, using about a 45 degree hold on my brush and just bringing them up and down. I'm being very loose with it. I'm not fussing on an individual petal for too long. And I'm also really loving the look of white space. There's so many different types of roses. There's some really fluffy looking ones um, that kind of look like peonies. And so this is kind of turning into that. So I'm gonna bring the shape forward a little bit more with petals in the front, taking up more space. And then maybe we'll add a couple little more curved petals in the back to give it more of that rose shape. And lighten some petals light in the back here. So you can get really fluffy or you can stay really tight and simple. Like so. And then for a couple little simple rosebuds that we might use as a little bit of filler or filler flowers for our piece. I like to start with just some petals that help to create this bowl shape. And then I'll bring in the tip of my brush and paint in these really thin really thin strokes back in here to show those tightly wound petals towards the center. Going in and darkening some spots in the center is gonna make it feel more dense as well. like so, and then another simple bud. We can start with mostly water and just a touch of color for this oval shape. And then going in around that oval shape with these C curves and maybe a petal falling off there, like so. Pulling the brush down. And then let's do one more 
open rose where we're seeing, it's a bit more romantic in the way this one flows, I think. So I'm gonna make this a dusty rose. And it feels a bit like a peony as well because it's so open and round, but we'll just start with these quick little dashes that outline a circle shape. You don't need to fill in the entire circle. Keep it really whimsical. And then I'll lighten my color and fluff them up even more with these lighter versions of these petals. So I'm going on the side of the brush for these and on the tip sometimes. I'm just following that circle shape. And then as I fluff out each section, I get wider with my strokes and also light, lighter in transparency. So I'm gonna be on the side of the brush a little bit more to make them just a bit wider, fatter shapes. that circle and you can go back in with some darker color and accent some of these spots here and there so really bring that forward and then adding in our, our leaves maybe we have a leaf here So, so a couple different ways to do loose watercolor roses. And now we're gonna combine all of the steps that we've covered in the previous uh, videos in this series for painting the cover art for my first book, Everyday Watercolor, but in the fall color palette. I hope that was helpful for you in showing you how to paint loose roses in many different perspectives and angles. So many people who get started with loose style watercolor painting really get stuck in painting the same type of rose or the same type of leaf over and over and over again. And that's how your work starts to look really boring and flat. So obviously practice helps you improve over time, but I hope that was helpful for you. And also check out my, my newest course, Everyday Watercolor Companion Course. It's under hundred bucks and it will give you all of this and so much more in depth information as a video companion to all three of my books, Everyday Watercolor, Everyday Watercolor Flowers, and Everyday Watercolor Seashores with tutorials and step-by-step -step information from subjects inside of all three of those books. And then next week we are finishing up this four part series where we are building up to create the final piece, which is the cover art from my first book that came out in 2017, Everyday Watercolor. So if, you're, you've, if, if you've been following along with the series, then next week is the final crescendo, the masterpiece of painting the actual art um, for the cover. Uh, if you haven't been following along with the series, make sure you check out the previous week's videos. They're super helpful and they build onto what we're gonna be painting next week, which is our final floral watercolor piece that is similar to what I did for my cover for Everyday Watercolor. So I'll see you in the next video.